What's up, what's up, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Tammy. This is Tammy Talks. All right, y'all. Love Island USA Season 5 episode. What is this? 20? This is flying by, right? Let's talk about it, y'all. If you're brand new to the channel, new viewer, or a returning viewer that is not yet subscribed, y'all know the drill. Hit that subscribe button. Once again, thank you to everybody that helped me get to 14,000 subscribers, and y'all know what's next. It's 15,000, right? We just gonna keep, we gonna keep the party going over here. So, if you have not yet subscribed, hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed the content. Thumbs up the video, y'all. Thumbs up the video helps push me further into the algorithm, gets more eyeballs onto the video so that we can have, like, better engagement and conversation in the comment section, all right? Y'all don't care about none of that. We are here to talk about this episode. I have a lot of notes, way more notes than I care to have, so I'm going to try to make sure that this is not a super long video, but let's get right into it. So it starts off where, you know, the girls are at Casa Amor. Cassie's talking to Rob. Remember, Rob is the snake uh, catcher. Rob got a lot of camera time, and I'm going to tell y'all now, I did not like his vibe. I don't like his attitude. I don't like Rob, but let's talk. So she calls this man awkward. It was a, it was an awkward conversation though. It, it was choppy. It was awkward. I don't know if that's just his personality. Um, he's one of those people. Okay. So I'm goofy, right? I can be super goofy. I laugh literally all day. Hell, I laugh in these videos the whole time. But I feel like he's, like, a very condescending guy in the way, like, he's a little too sarcastic for me. So, the conversation was, it was awkward. It was, I don't know. But he tells her that he kind of heard that she's annoying, but that's his love language. He likes to be annoyed. He likes to be bothered. He likes to be pestered. He's weird, okay? I don't even know how else to describe him. He's weird. I saw Queen E. Shout out to my girl. She was calling him Bieber, and he definitely had the baby, baby, baby <laughs> Bieber going on. So then we get Destiny. Destiny is talking to Zay, Isaiah. And they have this long conversation about how they, you know, he said that when he gets married, that's going to be it. When she gets married, she doesn't want to get divorced either. Like, she's on some, we're going to try to work it out, see what we can do to get past this. They want to get married once and once only. I'm the same way, right? My parents, my aunts and uncles, both said to my grandparents, one marriage. One. One. <laughs> one. I would like to have the same success as my parents. My parents will be married 45 years next month. I, I too, would like to have that. So I felt them on this. Um, that they then, um, Destiny makes a statement that she kind of feels that, you know, once you've been with somebody for so long and it gets kind of harder to love that person because of arguments, whatever the case, love becomes a choice. And he agrees. Now, I'm always very torn on the love is a choice conversation like I understand what people mean when they say that I don't know if I necessarily agree with it but I definitely understand where people are coming from so they they are really vibing out because of that I think they look attractive together too he's very very handsome destiny is pretty like they look I think they look nice together they they have a nice they have chemistry they have chemistry I'll say this is probably the most chemistry we've seen destiny have with a guy on this show we then get kk talking to eddie eddie is hot in that suit y'all see how eddie's sweating ain't nobody else sweating but <laughs> eddie is hot y'all okay so but she's talking to him he asked her who caught your eye when you walked in she was like nobody because for kk it's not so much about it's not so much about looks it's more about like your personality. Looks are kind of like a bonus for her. And he was like, you know what? Me too. Um, he says that he's a person that he wants to be like a protector and a provider. He don't want you to depend on him, but he wants to be available to you if you need something. They talk about travel. KK does a lot of traveling by herself so she wants to go to Greece so she's like Mykonos, Santorini he said he ain't never heard of them places I 
I think she said Athens. Isn't Athens the capital of Greece? Or at least the biggest city? Who Lord. Um, I'm going to let that go because Eddie seems nice. But KK, that should have been a red flag. You don't know what Athens, Greece is? That should have been a red flag. Um, nonetheless, they both agree that they are done playing games. They are ready to grow up and, you know, find their person to just experience life with. It just kills me, y'all, how KK's, what, 22? And, you know, I'm done with the games. I'm ready to grow up. And it's like, girl, you are 22. You are 22. Oh, God, when I was 22, Lord. <laughs> My God, but okay. So Carmen is talking to Rob. Rob got way too much camera time for me. Um, and he goes up and he picks up this this toad. Um, I was with Carmen. Don't bring that shit over here. See, he played too much because he definitely put it on the couch where she was. And if Carmen's better than me, because I'd have got up and walked away. Because I told you not to put that over here. I told you not to bring that over here. But that toad was staring at her. <laughs> So she gets up and sits next to him and she like Carmen likes to Carmen bothers me and I've said it before but Carmen like I feel like Carmen goes into this is what I've noticed right when Carmen was talking to Kenzo who she already knew allegedly um we didn't get the same spiel that she gave Bergie Victor and now Rob about how, you know, I'm kind of nerdy and I like Marvel and, but I'm a slow burn. We didn't get that with Kenzo. That's how y'all can tell is some, some fool la some fool gaziness going on, right? So, but nonetheless, he thinks that they are vibing so far. He's very crafty. She's into Marvel. He said he can build her anything. He's, I feel like he's charismatic, but he's too sarcastic at the same time. So he does like some little hand motions and shit and said that he's like making a mug that says, I like Carmen, whatever, whatever the case. Um, I think he's condescending the way that he's talking, which they are, per some of the ladies are perceiving as hilarious and humorous and oh my god he's so funny he would got his ass check playing with me like that I, i'ma just be real <laughs> i'ma keep it real carmen already um looking to move on she ain't real kenzo and i also kind of feel like it's because her and kenzo are gonna go back to scottsdale and get back into the relationship i think they had already we get imani and kyle it was a cool little chat nothing really like jumped out about their conversation but um, she wants a passionate, fun relationship, and he agrees. We then get Mattia. Is it Mattia? I tried to spell it phonetically. We then get Mattia and Cassie. Y'all know Cassie has grown on me, okay? Cassie, Cassie has grown on me because once you realize she don't mean, <laughs> once you realize she means well, she don't mean no harm, she grows on you. So Cassie is, he's like, I think I look like a douche, but I'm really not. She say, no, because you smile. You smile at everyone. Yeah, you smile. And it's like, Cassie's so nice. <laughs> Cassie's so nice. So she's like, let's talk about the tattoos. So he's talking about all his tattoos. She start pointing out where she want hers to be at. She's like, I want one here and here. And then, you know, maybe here. And it's like, girl. It just say you want a couple. But what they find out is, what we find out, more importantly, he's 29, Cassie is 22. Cassie wants somebody that has a more mature, laid-back personality, a calmer person, because she knows that she is so energetic and boisterous and loud already. So she wants somebody that's going to calm her down and balance her out. That is not Leonardo. Leo is, Leo is Cassie. They're both very loud and boisterous. So Cassie's in the confessional talking about some, ay, 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 my, my head is spinning. I know, girl, because you, you, are, you are in a tornado right now. Cassie don't know what to do with herself, all these men around. <laughs> Cassie ain't coming back to you, Leo. <laughs> Cassie is not coming back to you, Leo. Just the FYI, babe, in case you didn't know. So we see everybody like pairing up to go to sleep. The guy's over there 
before I even get to the ladies picking who they gonna sleep with, did y'all see how Marco was laid up in that bed with his legs crossed, like rubbing his his thigh? What the fuck was what was that about? <sighs> So the girls are pairing up with these guys to go to sleep. Carmen and Rob share a bed. She said if there was a boundary because she's a slow burn, even though when she got with Kenzo, she damn near went to sleep riding him. But hey girl, whatever. Imani and, or Imani and Kyle, Eddie and KK, Mattia and Cassie, Destiny and Zay, and then Hannah and Brandon. Lord, I forgot Hannah and Brandon was there. Okay, like we ain't seen Hannah had no conversation. Hannah was very lost this entire episode. And I wonder what that's about. I wonder if Hannah, because Hannah is closed with Marco, if she is really just going to like kind of sit in the corner and I guess hope that Marco does the same. Girl, get out there and meet these men. Get out there and meet these men. Cassie and... Matia are very snugly in bed. Did y'all see that? The next morning, he was trying to hold her hand and stuff. She offered to make him a coffee. I said, ooh, Leo, you in danger, sir. You are in danger. Danger. So the guys are making breakfast, uh, the, the old guys, the originals. So the guys are over there making breakfast, trying to figure out what the girls are doing. So they're like, man, I hope my girl stays true. Um, Keenan is saying, man, the KK, I hope, you know, KK don't flip on me. Shut up. Leo saying the same about Cassie. Y'all don't know what these heifers are doing. They're over there enjoying themselves. Y'all have some heifers come in to see y'all later. So y'all will be enjoying yourselves later too. I hate the whole woe is me when y'all know it's about to be a bunch of ladies coming in for y'all. I don't understand that. So... KK is talking, oh, excuse me, KK, yes, KK is talking to the ladies, and she's like, we're going to have some fun today, I'm ready to kiss some dudes, I said, are you, (laughs) okay, Hannah wants to get to know some people, but wants to make it very clear that she is, you know, with Marco, Hannah don't plan on turning her head, it could be that no one is attractive enough to her there, Um, I just hope she gives it a fair chance. Um, then they was all like, we gonna be on Bergy time. You my number one, you my number one, you my number one. I said, don't do Bergs like that. But you can tell that it was like fun shade, not the way that Victor and Marco used to go at him. So we get to Destiny and Zay hanging out on the beach. And again, I said, who knew Destiny was so fun? Who knew Destiny has such personality? Usually she's sitting over there just, she wasn't doing that today. So she's talking to Zay, and it works for them because she likes to talk. He likes to sit back, listen, and observe. I wrote down that she's definitely lighter. We see some more personality. She's been smiling the whole time. She's, like, engaging in conversation. She's not talking at him. She's asking him questions. He's asking her questions. I said, Destiny, you probably should have been like this from day one, sis. Then I could understand your stands the way that they stand because I still don't get it right now, but that's just me. Imani and Rob. These men are so mesmerized by a, a woman having hazel eyes. They're like, oh, my God, your eyes. Oh my God, your eyes, your eyes. It's like, okay. So she's looking at him. He's looking at her. He's like, what's going on? She's like, I don't know. And he's like, you don't know. And she's like, I think I need a kiss to clear my mind. And I'd be damned if they kiss. I said, the fuck is going on here? So this is how you're supposed to play the game to my understanding. Um, I just feel like Imani Imani is just all over the place. I feel like she don't really like none of these guys. I feel like she's not taking anything too, too serious. She said, I'm here for a good time, not a long time. Because I feel like Imani would tell somebody that she's interested in getting to know them. And then you turn around and she's over there kissing somebody else. Like literally, she'll go from talking to you here to walking over here and kissing somebody else. She's very peculiar. It's very odd. It's very odd. 
um, everybody's looking like, because, ah, like, girl, what are you doing? How How is this your first conversation with this man and y'all kissing? I guess. Meanwhile, back at back over at the original house, the boys get a text that seven new ladies are coming to join them. We have Taylor, Naja, Ashley, Allie. Allie looks old. That was my first critique. She looks old. That face, she said that she was, what, 27? That face is given no younger than 42. That lady looks old in the face. She's nice. But she looks old. Then we have Taylor S. I think that's irresponsible <laughs> to have two people named Taylor come in. I think that's irresponsible casting. Then we have Deja and Johnny. So the new girls are saying how attractive Berkey is and how they want to get to know him. I told y'all it was a picture floating around of Berkey from that villa. And I feel like the camera just don't do him justice. And when I mean the camera... I mean, like the video, because he looked very handsome in his picture. Now, all Bergy has to do, don't wear that little bone shit no more, Bergy. I said, you got a new one on. This one has stars and shells. I don't want to see these bone necklaces no more, Bergy. I don't. I don't. I just feel like you, you just don't. You need to get you a little chain. Just don't wear nothing. It's okay. I can't. And then Jonah's name comes up um, a lot as well. I think Jonah's handsome. I do. I don't know about his personality per se, but I think Jonah is 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 attractive. So Keenan's talking to Naja. Um, she tells him that she's quiet. She's like a listener. She likes to kind of sit back and observe. But from what she knows about him, what she's been watching, he's the type of guy she would go for personality-wise, maybe looks-wise as well. Um, he lets her know that he's interested. She lets him know that she's interested. Cool. Keenan gets in the confessional, goddamn, and he's like, she reminds me of KK. I'm the only one being tested. You're not the only one being tested, though. You're just the only one that does not know how to deal with the situation. You're not the only one being tested. You just like every heifer that comes through here. That's all. Um, he said that they have terrific vibes. Keenan feels he has terrific vibes with everybody. He said that about Cassie, Emily, KK, and Imani so far. These are four different ladies. Like, how do you have terrific vibes? Okay, Keenan. So, we back over at Casa Amor. We get Rob and Carmen. So, he asks her, and he's like being kind of serious, I guess, if she's open to starting anything uh, new. So she said that she is open, okay? Even though she's with Kenzo, a couple with Kenzo, she is open. But, you know, I, I'm just a slow burn. I said, you a slow burn ass lie. You are not a slow burn, Carmen. I want Carmen to stop lying about this. Because now, you know, I don't like to get into behind the scenes type stuff or the research of it all. But I cannot forget the fact that you and Kenzo knew each other, and that explained why you are so comfortable with this man already. So stop saying that you're a slow burn because it's making you look like a liar. Been sick of her and her eyebrows. I mean, I got to get mine done, so don't look over. That's why I wear my big glasses, but still. So while they're talking... Um, he's like, I want to continue to get to know you. And she's like, okay, cool. But what about Imani? Not that I, you know, I didn't know that you were like, that that was even a thing. Not that you owe me an exclamation. And he's like, I don't owe you anything. I don't even really like you that much. I don't know you. This is time number two that I'd have got up and walked the fuck away from Rob. And I get that that is his way of joking. Maybe that's his love language. Maybe that's how he flirts. Ugh. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. And I am, which I'm sure y'all can tell, extremely sarcastic, right? Extremely sarcastic. But something about his gives an air of being condescending. And I don't like it. So we then, she gives him a tour um, of her tattoos. And I wanted her to explain her 414. Because is she from Milwaukee? I don't, uh, if, if she, cause she's from Wisconsin, 414 is our area code. 
I wonder if she's from Milwaukee. I would be disappointed. <laughs> I would be disappointed because I don't think she's representing us well. Not, not us Milwaukeeans or us Wisconsinites for that matter. So we get KK and Kyle. So he's asking her, you know, how's it going? Are you open? What are you looking for? What's your intentions? How are you feeling about everything? KK said, I'm open. I'm single and ready to mingle. You heard? That's how she's feeling. She wants to have fun. She wants to live in the moment. And then she says she'll think about and, you know, examine everything that happened later. That's what y'all should have all been doing. So they say, let's play truth or dare. Y'all know truth or dare means truth or kiss, right? So first up, Carmen dares Eddie to kiss his top two girls in a three-way kiss. I feel like the three-way kisses are unnecessary. But he kisses Destiny, and that kiss is kissing, okay? So then KK is like, wait, wait, wait. And she, like, jumps up and joins in the three-way kiss. And don't dare me to three-way kiss somebody because I'm not going to do it. That's how y'all get mono. <laughs> That's how you get mono. Um, but it looks like Destiny and, um, Eddie might, might have a little something. They got, they have, um, physical chemistry for sure. Cause their kiss wasn't as bad as some of her kisses that we've seen. Destiny said that she thinks that Leo will be the first to turn his head easily. Agreed. Um, Rob has to imitate his favorite sexual position with his number one girl. He's like, I need a wall. I said, ooh. He said, because he likes to have sex in the shower. So he picks Carmen up very easily. And Carmen is like, wow, I'm just getting so much attention in the game. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Hannah didn't get no attention. <laughs> why would, like, why didn't Hannah get any attention? Like, she didn't get no, did Hannah talk at this episode, y'all? Is it me? Y'all know I like Hannah. I feel like Hannah is the most mature person on that island. I just feel like Hannah didn't, I, I don't know. I don't know. Makes me, mm, makes me wonder what's going on there. Uh, Cassie gets there to Spider-Man kiss her top two men and rape them. Y'all, I didn't know what the hell a Spider-Man kiss was. When they said do it upside down, this... <laughs> Why did I think that she was going to have to, like, do a handstand and kiss? <laughs> I, like, I, I don't know why I thought that. But she kisses Ma Mattia, um, which they like each other. C hell, Cassie's head is going to turn. And then she kisses Rob. And she only kisses Rob because he's right there. You can tell she kissed Rob because everybody else been kissing him. And she's like, Mattia wins. And it's like. Y'all gonna, y'all gonna be necking pretty soon. I can feel it. Imani has to suck on the nipples of her top boy. I said, what type of shit is this? Um, she goes over, picks Kyle. Then she was like, this is not my thing. But then she was like, he tastes a little salty, girl. Is he sweating? <laughs> it's hot out there. He's sweating. And then the final one that we saw was KK has to kiss the boy that will most, the boy most likely to get her to turn her head, and she kisses Brandon. So, KK and Brandon had a conversation um, earlier, and I didn't take notes on it, but she was, like, talking about how she hasn't really been as open in the process as she should have been because she's been so focused on, like, wanting to make it work with Keenan, but she liked Brandon's maturity and the way that he really sat back and listened, active listening, sat back and listened to her and then was able to like engage in meaningful conversation. And they kissed, was kissing. I said, oh, you like Brandon? I mean, Brandon's very forgotten to me. I don't know what he does. I forgot he was there. But KK, if you like it, I love it. KK said, I'm getting my groove back. You hear me? <laughs> Stella, how Stella, no, not how Stella got her groove back, how KK got her groove back, because that's, that's what she was on, demon time. So, back over at the, the OG villa, um, Berkey grabs Allie, okay, and everybody is like, ooh, they're going to soul ties. I don't want to hear about soul ties no more, because KK damn near lost her shit about soul ties a couple episodes ago. 
Bergie gets up there and he's talking to Allie, who is from Madison, Wisconsin, which is like maybe an hour um, northwest of Milwaukee. Uh, it's a college, small college town. It's a college town. University of Wisconsin is there. And they have this whole like Midwest connection. And the way that the guys were saying, like, they're from the Midwest, I said, not too much on the Midwest. <laughs> Don't do it. Not, not too much on Wisconsin. Y'all be thinking y'all know what Wisconsin is like. Y'all be thinking y'all know what Milwaukee is like. Don't get it twisted. We not up here tipping cows and, and, and on dairy farms like people like to think about us. Don't, not, not too much. <laughs> um, but no, so they're up there and Berkey is saying how he is more than ready for, he's more ready for a relationship now than he was when he first got there. So I think Berkey has learned some things, right? I think Berkey has been observing how some of the other guys are moving, how some of the ladies want to be treated, the mistakes that the guys are making, the, the wins that the guys are doing. And I think he's processing all of that and it's going to make him be amazing in a relationship, right? So he's talking to Allie and she's like, she doesn't have any expectations because that leads to disappointment. And he's like, and don't I know it, okay? Because, you know, Bergie done had a lot of girls come in, basically use him to kind of stay in the game. And then he's been, you know, Bergie's been single pretty much the whole time. So they are vibing. They're vibing. She wants a certain number of kids. He wants that too. They have the whole Midwest small town connection going. You know, he's from Minnesota. She's from Madison, which is a smaller city. Like they just, they vibing. I think she's the one that said that she thought that Bergie was attractive anyways. So I said, look at little Bergie Berg. All y'all Bergy haters can't say nothing about him in the comments no more because he done got him somebody, okay? Bergy done found him somebody. He said he wants a nice tall drink of water. She's 5'6". He said he like him 5'7", but that'll work for him. I said, go ahead, Bergy. I hope this works out for him. He has to learn. He has to work on that kissing because that's a disaster, but I'm happy for Bergy. I am. Um, let me know what you guys thought about tonight's episode. What do y'all think about the ladies? D do y'all, like, does it bother y'all that they got two ladies named Taylor there? Because when the guys were talking, they would say, I, I like Taylor. Which one? Nonetheless, um, we are Team KK over here getting her groove back. I would prefer... No, I don't have any preference on who I think anybody should be with. Yes, let me know what you think about the pairings that the girls are like, kind of moving towards. Why do y'all think Hannah was like non-existent in this? Um, when you to, why do y'all think Hannah was non-existent in this episode? Just talk about everything down below. If you have not already subscribed, thumbs up the video. Peace.